in the Mahabharata. Our dear Pandavas were sent out for 12 years into the forest. And the 13th year being Kshatriyas, they lived incognito, Agyatavas, where they had to hide themselves and stay. That's too much for a Kshatriya. It's worse than death. Dishonor is worse than death, according to Kshatriya rules. So they were living in the forest like that, incognito, moving from one place to another. And Duryodhan had sent his spies all over. Not spice, not Tikhawat, spy. So he sent them in all these different places. And they were all coming back telling Duryodhan, we have no news for you. We don't know where the Pandavas are. Duryodhan said, the next spy will have some information. The next spy came, he said, we have no clue where the Pandavas are. We searched everywhere, we didn't find him. Duryodhan was getting more and more disheartened. Because his purpose was not to kill them, to torture them. Just to find where they are in the 13th year of exile, where they are supposed to be incognito. Because if they are found in the 13th year, what happens? Another 12 years in the forest. And that's sadistic pleasure. He was very happy seeing them suffer. Paradukha Sukhi. So he was talking to Bhishma Dev. Duryodhan started telling Dronacharya, I think the Pandavas are dead. That's why my spies are not able to find. Bhishma Dev said, I have seen their astrological chart and the lines on their palm. They are Chiranjivis. They, are, they have long life. Dirgayu. They cannot die like this. You are wrong. Duryodhan said, but I am not getting any news from anyone. Which means they are gone. Dronacharya also said, no, 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 they are alive. You have to find them. As this discussion is going on, one spy comes and falls at the feet of Duryodhan and tells him the story of Matsya Desh. He tells him, I have a news for you from Matsya Desh. Duryodhan said, yes, go ahead. The spy said, the commander-in-chief of Matsya Desh by the name Kichak has been killed. And he's been killed over a dispute of a lady. And, a man, and the man who killed Kichak was very strong. So Duryodhan thinks, ah, this is just another story, sideline. This is Vishayantara, different topic. Because Pandavas are dead. At that time, Bhishmadev says, no, wait a minute, Pandavas are alive. So taking these pieces together, Duryodhan starts thinking. Kichak is a Maharathi. He's a very powerful fighter. Which means to kill him, you need another Maharathi or a Sahasrarathi higher than Maharathi. And there are only three people who can kill Kichak. One is Shalya. The other is Balaram. And the third is Bhima. He said Shalya and Balaram will not kill. Because they are not related in the story. So which means there is only one possibility. Kichak has been killed by a strong person. That is Bhima. And he was found with brothers. Which means the Pandavas and a dispute over a lady. Draupadi. Picture perfect. Find them. Duryodhana was convinced that in Matsya Desh, in the kingdom of Virat, they were all hiding in different forms. Go and find them. So he sent his army just to go and find them, not to attack, just to find. Because if he finds them, he can just say, oh, the Pandavas are found, which means plus 12 into the forest, another 12 years. So he sent his army. At that time, there's one friend of Duryodhan by the name Susharma. Susharma calls up Duryodhan and says, I heard you sending your army. Wait a minute, even I have problem with King Virat. We will attack together. Your enemy, my enemy, therefore we are friends, common enemy. Let's attack from both sides. Duryodhan said, very good plan. Yes, Shubhasya Shigram. Anything auspicious, do it immediately. So from one side, Susharma started attacking. And what did he do? He started stealing cows from the Goshala of King Virat. The news went to King Virat and King Virat said, I am going. Yudhishthir Maharaj went to King Virat and he said, don't worry. Because they are all incognito by the way. They are all decked up in a different way. 
He said the two cowherd boys who were there in the Goshala, they know some fighting also. He is talking about Nakul and Sahadev. Some fighting. <laughs> they are Kshatriyas. They know some fighting, they can manage. So king, you stay here. So king Virata said, okay, no problem. They attacked King Susharma. King Susharma went back, they got the cows back. This news went to the Kaurava army. The Kaurava army started attacking from another side. Now King Virata was in there at this time in the province. So the message went to his son, Uttar Kumar. Now Uttar Kumar was a braxter. Braxter means always talking about himself. Hey, main ye karta hun. Aapko pata nahi main kya kya kar sakta hun. Oh, by the way, in 1956 I did this. In 1974 I did this. Just talking about ourselves. All fake story. Patang. Lapet rahe bas aur kuch nahi. He said this all fake story. But Uttar Kumar used to do this with all the women to get some attention. And the girls used to be, wow, wonderful, you're so nice, you're so impressive. Matra Mandali Kshama Kare. Yatharu, as it is. <laughs> so the news went to Uttar Kumar. The king is not there and the Kaurava army are attacking. Now please you attack. And all the women said, yeah, yeah, we want to see you live in action. Please, please, please. Uttar Kumar, now he's stuck. Because all fake stories. And now real time to fight. So he's, uh, uh, I have no problem fighting, but uh, I don't have a chariot driver. Big problem. Draupadi went to Uttar Kumar's sister and said, tell your brother, there is a eunuch. You know who that is? Arjun. There is a eunuch here. He, she knows a little bit of horse riding and chariot fighting also. So you can take, no problem. Tell your brother to go fight. The chariot driver is this eunuch. So Uttar Kumar had no option now. So he went. Dar dar ke bichare chale gaye aage. He went ahead. Sat on the chariot and started telling this eunuch. Uh, I don't feel like fighting because I don't have faith in your driving skills. The eunuch said, you see how I'm driving, you just courage, muster your courage and you get ready to fight. Okay. As they're going ahead, this guy gets out of the chariot and starts running in the opposite direction. Uttar Kumar. <laughs> and he tells the eunuch, I don't know to fight, let me go, please let me go, this is too embarrassing. And look at the scene. The Kaurava army is ready to shoot their arrows. And here is the prince running in the opposite direction, being chased by a eunuch. <laughs> get back, get back. So Kauravas are thinking, what's going on? The eunuch caught hold of Uttar Kumar and said, listen, now you will do as I say. I will fight and you will drive the chariot. Uttar Kumar said, 1947. Hey. <laughs> Nein. Tell me things that you know. He said, uh, <coughs> uh, I can manage. <laughs> Arjuna said, better. Okay. Sit and start driving. Take me to a nearby tree. He said, but I don't have faith in your fighting skills. He said, shh, chala. You just drive. Take me to that tree. So he took this eunuch to that tree and there Arjuna had completely hidden all his Gandiva and Pashupati Astra and all Agni Astra and Brahmastra and all of that. He took it out and started shooting. And with one arrow, millions of arrows started penetrating into the opposite army and they started leaving because of fear. They started talking, how can a eunuch defeat us? This is only possible by Gandiva Dharishri Arjuna, no one else. This Uttar Kumar looks at the eunuch. He says, Aapko mila ye sab <laughs> He said, when you were bragging about yourself, I was practicing. <laughs> Uttar Kumar said, but this bow is very famous. This is the Gandiva. The eunuch said, yes, and I'm Arjuna. He said, what? Arjuna? Uh, the Arjuna? Yes, the Arjuna, as eunuch in your kingdom. Shh, secret. He said, no, I'm going to go and tell everyone this is Arjuna. 
Arjuna said, if you go and tell everyone that I am Arjuna, I will go and tell all that women that you don't know to fight. <laughs> then they will no longer be impressed. <laughs> so Uttar Kumar said, uh, okay, just go and tell them I fought very well. Arjuna said, I will on the condition that you keep quiet. You don't tell them that I am Arjuna. I said, okay, no problem. So this story, Dhritarashtra Maharaj knows how one Arjuna can defeat the whole Kaurava, uh, Kaurava army. He's thinking of this in his mind and he's thinking to himself, if one Arjuna being a eunuch can defeat the Kauravas, what to speak of when he's in full potency, Kshatriya Vesh, along with Bhima who killed Kichak, along with Nakul, Sahadev and Yudhishthir Maharaj, along with Krishna and that too on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, home ground advantage. Oh Sanjay, tell me what did they do? First verse. Sometimes people say, Kesa sawal hai hai? Yudh mein ja ke kya hota hai? What do they do on a run of bhoomi? It's like almost asking somebody is hungry, he's sitting on the dining table with scarf, fork and spoon and there is prasad in front of him. What did he do? <laughs> Hare, of course he ate. <laughs> what kind of question is that? Of course he ate. So it's an obvious question they fought. But the reason he says, Kim akuruvata sanjaya, Meaning, wait a minute, the father's anxiety, because Dhritarashtra was not just materially blind, he was also spiritually blind. The father's anxiety is that, wait a minute, one Arjuna as a eunuch can defeat my sons. What to speak of all Pandavas put together with Krishna at Dharma Kshetra. I don't want my sons to die. Please tell me they didn't give up. Please tell me they didn't compromise. Please tell me they didn't, they, they didn't get killed. Please tell me there was no compromise and handshake. Tell me that my sons won. Please, Kim Akur, what Bolo bolo, kya ho If someone is hearing commentary, you know, live telecast of some cricket commentary, every ball, say, kya ho aage, kya ho? Of course, they are batting, he knows. But in that ball, did he hit a four? Did he hit a six? Was it a dot ball? Did he run a single? Kya kiya? Kya hua? Kim Akur, what So every minute, he wants live telecast. Now, from whom? For that, wait a minute. 